on World News Tonight. A spreading virus. The EU signs a deal for monkeypox vaccines as they prepare for the worst case scenario. A dramatic reversal. US President rakes his campaign pledge to make Saudi Arabia a pariah over its human rights. The battle continues. The critical city on the brink after the last remaining bridge was destroyed in eastern Ukraine. And a strawberry moon. The second super full moon for the year 2022 rises as it shines upon a Greek temple. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, just as the COVID pandemic is seemingly coming to an end, the world is fearing another outbreak of a deadly virus. The European Union signed an agreement with the Bavarian Nordic for the supply of about 110 doses of vaccines against monkeypox, the EU Commission and the company said. Health authorities around the world are racing to tackle the monkeypox outbreak. Now the EU has signed a big deal for the supply of vaccines. It's set to get about 110,000 doses from Danish pharmaceuticals firm Bavarian Nordic. Deliveries will start immediately and be complete within months. About 900 cases of the virus have been reported in 19 EU countries and also in Norway and Iceland. The latter two will be able to get the EU doses despite not being members. Right now, the Bavarian Nordic shot is authorised by the EU for use against smallpox, a closely related virus, but not monkeypox. The European Commission says regulators are working on a speedy approval. Some member states, including Germany and Spain, have already placed their own orders for monkeypox vaccines. Bavarian Nordic raised its financial outlook for the year following news of the EU deal. Now, South Korea reviews implementing a policy of 21-day self-isolation for selected people who've been in close contact with someone infected with monkeypox. The country is also working to import treatments and vaccines. South Korean health authorities are taking steps to prevent an outbreak of monkeypox in the country. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency said Tuesday one of those steps includes introducing a system to prevent and treat patients and those they've been in contact with. Those that have been in close contact with an infected person will be divided into three categories of high, medium and low risk groups. Those that are in the high risk group that have had sexual relations with a confirmed patient or are living with them could be placed in quarantine at home for up to 21 days. The virus is related to smallpox and can cause a range of symptoms, including headache, skin lesions, fever, body aches, swollen lymph nodes and fatigue. Authorities said they're also trying to import a first batch of the monkeypox treatment Tecovirimat. Next month, they'll help treat some 500 people. We're taking steps to import the antiviral drug for 500 people during July. Those that have contracted monkeypox will receive treatment at the National Medical Center until their infectivity has dissipated. Once monkeypox patients are admitted to the facility, they may have to stay until they're no longer contagious. The agency said it's currently in discussions with manufacturers to bring monkeypox vaccines into Korea. It's also working with the emergency services to implement effective response measures when transporting an infected patient. The KDCA is also working to work with animal-related agencies to prevent the spread of the virus via household pets or wild animals. Meanwhile, the country's environment and agriculture agencies have strengthened guidelines so that they can alert related ministries of unusual overseas imports of primates and rodents from the African continent. Fires, historic flooding and extreme drought have fallen upon the West in the USA. Authorities issued evacuation orders for communities in the path of wildfires that broke out in Arizona and California as excessive heat grips a large swath of the United States. Oh my God. I think that's, that's got to be like a thousand feet. Wild weather is stunning Americans across the country. Near Flagstaff, Arizona, smoke billowed from a wildfire which has burned over 5,000 acres of land. It's an eerie look. 
and in California, hundreds of firefighters are working to control the blaze that broke out over the weekend in the San Gabriel Mountains northeast of Los Angeles, amid lingering drought and warmer temperatures. Excessive heat warnings are stretching into the central U.S. and the east, from Nebraska to West Virginia, north into Wisconsin and south into Mississippi. It's very hot. <laughs> Texans, too, are feeling the burn. I, I don't push too hard on a hot, hot day like this. The Houston Health Department on Monday warned residents to stay vigilant. Tornado sirens jolted downtown Chicago Monday as storms tore through the area, leading to property damage in the suburbs and thousands of people without power. And in Yellowstone National Park, heavy rains and a sudden spike in temperatures unleashed melted snow accumulated in the park's higher elevations, leading to flooding and rock slides, with a house being swept away and the closure of the entire park to visitors for the first time since 1988. Amid the record high gas prices in the U.S., the White House says President Biden will visit Saudi Arabia the next month, despite his campaign promise to isolate the Saudi government. U.S. President Joe Biden will visit Saudi Arabia next month, where he will meet with the kingdom's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The announcement Tuesday from the White House dismayed human rights advocates and appeared to break Biden's campaign pledge to make Saudi Arabia a, quote, pariah. Bin Salman, commonly known as MBS, was once hailed as a reformer in the deeply conservative kingdom. But attitudes turned when he ordered widespread arrests of perceived rivals. And then in 2018, Jamal Khashoggi, an American-based Saudi journalist and critic of the crown prince who wrote for the Washington Post, entered the Saudi consulate in Turkey and never came out. U.S. intelligence implicated MBS in the murder. The Saudi government denies the prince was involved. In 2019, Biden vowed to make Saudi Arabia, quote, pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are over the killing of Khashoggi. The White House has said as recently as this month that Biden's view has not changed. But global events did. Inflation, Russia's war in Ukraine, and Iranian nuclear talks now mean Washington hopes Riyadh, a top oil producer, will keep a steady flow of crude to Europe and help firm up an alliance of Gulf Arab states and Israel opposed to Tehran. What has changed, really? I mean, the, 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 the president, when he was running for office, he called uh, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. pariah and so on. At a news conference Tuesday, reporters pressed State Department spokesperson Ned Price on the president's commitment to human rights. I can tell you it hasn't changed. Uh, and President Biden actually said this just the other week. Uh, he said, I'm not going to change my view on human rights. Uh, so in every relationship, of course, we bring our uh, values with us. And human rights is always on the agenda. Human rights is always on uh, the table. So too are the interests of the American people. And these two things uh, can be, and I would say must be, uh, complementary. Biden's visit to the Middle East will include a stop in Israel and the Palestinian territories. Israel's defense minister on Tuesday said Washington should help lead regional military cooperation to counter Iranian influence. The U.S. House of Representatives has given final congressional approval to a bill to bolster Supreme Court security ahead of an anticipated ruling curtailing abortion rights and in a light to arrest of a man charged with attempting to murder. The U.S. House of Representatives voted overwhelmingly on Tuesday to bolster Supreme Court security in light of threats made against justices ahead of their anticipated ruling curtailing abortion rights. The legislation, which had already cleared the Senate, passed the House only 396 to 27 vote. President Joe Biden is prepared to sign it. The measure expands police protection to the families of the justices and senior officers of the court and comes as the Supreme Court is set to rule in the coming weeks on a major abortion case from Mississippi. A leaked draft opinion last month showed that its conservative majority is poised to overturn the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that legalized abortion nationwide, leading to protests across the country, including outside the homes of some of the justices. Just last week, a California man carrying a handgun, ammunition, a crowbar and pepper spray was arrested outside the Maryland home of Justice Brett Kavanaugh. 
and charged with attempted murder. The federal judiciary is also calling for separate legislation that would offer more protection for all federal judges. The U.S. Marshals Service said judges were subject to over 4,000 threats and inappropriate communications in 2021. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, dozens of defense ministers from NATO and other parts of the world are expected to discuss weapons deliveries to Ukraine in Brussels, U.S. officials said, as Kiev calls for a significant increase in arms to help hold off Russian troops in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine said on Tuesday its forces were still holding out inside Severodonetsk after Russia destroyed the last bridge to the city marking a potential turning point in one of the war's bloodiest battles, now the biggest fight in Ukraine. Satellite images released by Maxa Technologies on Tuesday showed the damage to structures around the eastern Ukrainian city collected on Saturday. Ukraine says more than 500 civilians are trapped inside a chemical factory in an industrial zone of the city, where its forces have resisted weeks of Russian bombardment and assault. The city's mayor said evacuations were being carried out discreetly every minute when there is a lull and a possibility of transportation. The National Police of Ukraine on Monday released footage of officers evacuating civilians in bomb shelters in what it said was Previlia in Luhansk region, just over 12 miles of Severodonetsk. Ukraine still holds Lysychansk, the twin city of Severodonetsk on higher ground on the opposite bank of the river. But with all the bridges now cut between the two cities, Ukrainian forces acknowledge they could be encircled, just like in Mariupol, a city which fell in May after months of Russian siege. Russia's separatist proxies said any Ukrainian troops left behind must surrender or die. Both sides claim to have inflicted huge casualties in the fighting over the city. Moscow has committed the bulk of its firepower to delivering one of President Vladimir Putin's stated objectives, forcing Kiev to cede the full territory of two eastern provinces. Local separatist media said Ukrainian artillery struck a market on Monday in the Russian-backed Donetsk region. Bigger battles could lie ahead for the wider Ukrainian-held pocket of the Donbass. Beyond the Donbass, Ukrainian officials hope that Russia's focus on capturing the east will drain its forces from other areas. But on Tuesday, Russia said it struck an artillery weapons depot in Ukraine's Chernihiv region, the RIA news agency reported, citing the Russian Defense Ministry. Advisors to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration unanimously recommended that the agency authorize Moderna Inc.'s mRNA COVID-19 vaccine for children and teens aged 6 to 17 years of age. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine shot could soon be available for those as young as 6 years old in the U.S. Advisors to the Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday unanimously backed the use of Moderna's shot for the country's youngest age bracket yet. Around 77 million people in the U.S. have received at least two doses of Moderna's vaccine, which has long been available for those over 18. However, if it is approved, a significant spike in demand from this younger age group is unlikely. Pfizer-BioNTech's vaccine was authorized for children aged 5 to 11 in October. Approval for teenagers preceded that by months. Yet according to data from the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, only around 60% of 12 to 17-year-olds and 30% of those aged 5 to 11 are fully vaccinated in the United States. The CDC echoed the FDA panel's recommendation to expand Moderna's vaccine availability on Tuesday. There have long been concerns that Moderna's vaccine poses a higher risk of heart inflammation, primarily in younger males. Some countries in Europe have limited its use for younger age groups, while the FDA had delayed its review of the shot to assess the risks. But U.S. regulators on Tuesday suggested the findings were either inconsistent or not statistically significant, and could actually be due to chance. 
A panel of outside experts are expected on Wednesday to consider the Moderna shot for those under six, as well as BioNTech's vaccine for those under five, and in both cases, as young as six months. Food assistance from the World Food Programme has been suspended for 1.7 million people in South Sudan. The programme's acting chief in the country blamed a funding shortfall of 426 million US dollars. The UN's World Food Programme said on Tuesday that it has suspended some food aid in South Sudan due to a funding shortfall, heightening the risk of starvation for 1.7 million people. At Ayinka Badejo Sanogo, the WFP's acting country director, said South Sudan is facing its hungriest year since independence more than a decade ago. We are particularly concerned with these cuts, especially because these cuts are happening at the start of the lean season when families have completely exhausted any food reserves and are likely to continue to suffer acute levels of hunger as the lean season deepens. Essentially, WFP in South Sudan, we are in farming prevention mode. The move suspends aid to almost a third of the 6.2 million people WFP had planned to assist this year. Globally, food prices have been soaring amid the conflict in Ukraine, leaving many humanitarian agencies with funding shortfalls. Badejo Sonogo said 426 million US dollars is urgently required to cover needs for the next six months. The WFP said it had exhausted all options before suspending food assistance, including halving rations in 2021. More than 60% of South Sudan's population is grappling with severe hunger, a situation that is exacerbated by climate change and conflict. The European Court of hum Human Rights has intervened at the 11th hour to prevent the first flight of migrants from UK to Rwanda under a scheme that opponents have called shameful and catastrophic. The UK's first flights taking asylum seekers to Rwanda did not take off as scheduled on Tuesday after an 11th hour intervention by the European Court of Human Rights. Derided by opponents, charities and religious leaders as shameful, the British government's plan had already faced a series of legal challenges. At least 30 would-be passengers had, in recent days, successfully argued that they should not be deported on health or human rights grounds, leaving just a handful on board. The plane's engines had started and cabin crew boarded on Tuesday evening when the ECHR granted an injunction to prevent the deportation of one of the remaining men. That triggered a series of legal challenges that stopped the flight from departing. The ECHR ruling said the man, an Iraqi, should not be removed until three weeks after the end of a judicial review being held into the legality of the scheme. That's due to take place in July at the High Court in London. According to official figures, more than 28,500 people were detected arriving in Britain on small-scale boats last year. Britain's government says the $148 million deal it struck with Rwanda will break up people smuggling networks. Earlier on Tuesday, Prime Minister Boris Johnson had complained that legal challenges were undermining attempts to support safe routes for asylum seekers. British Home Secretary Priti Patel said she was disappointed, but that the government was not deterred and would prepare for the next flight. Human rights groups say the policy will put migrants at risk. The UN's refugee agency says Rwanda, whose own human rights record is under scrutiny, does not have the capacity to process the claims properly. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A New York court has ruled that an elephant at the Bronx Zoo must remain there as she is not legally considered as a person. The ruling was made when the state's highest court voted 5-2 to, to reject a call to an animal rights group to release it.
Australia said that they want deep cooperation with Japan as the two U.S. allies face complex security circumstances in Asia as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, rising inflation and COVID-19 disruption. Clashes broke out in several cities in Ecuador after police detained the leader of the country's largest indigenous organization after he led blockades on several highways in protests against the government's economic policies. Residents and animals in North Indian cities struggle under severe heat wave conditions as temperatures soar. Britain's Duke and Duchess of Cambridge laid a wreath and spoke to survivors of the Greenfield Tower blaze that claimed the lives of 72 people and revealed the widespread and fatal flaws in building regulations. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. Just in case you couldn't watch any of the stories we add tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with a look at the second super moon of the year as it lights on the marble columns of a Greek temple. Stay safe and have a good night.